Hi folks, Harry Frank from Red Giant here, and in this tutorial I'd like to show you Logo Motion from Red Giant Universe. A Logo Motion is a plugin that allows you to easily animate something using an intro animation, an idle animation, and an outro animation. Let me quickly show you this in action. Now, first, before I apply the Logo Motion plugin, there's a little bit of prep work that I have to do to get this logo ready to be used by Logo Motion. Because logos can be anywhere from 10 by 10 pixels to 10,000 by 10,000 pixels, we need to get this logo into a consistent size container. So in the case of Premiere, that means nesting this inside another sequence. In a host app like After Effects, it would be a matter of pre-composing. It's the same idea, no matter what host app you're in, of basically getting this logo into something that is the same size in which we are editing. So for Premiere, this is simply a matter of right-clicking and selecting Nest. In After Effects, this would be a simple pre-compose, and I'll demonstrate this quickly in After Effects as well. So let's call this our logo animation here. And I'll apply Universe Logo Motion, which is found under Universe Motion Graphics in my video effects. Let's drop this on my layer and rewind to the beginning and hit play. By default, you'll see that it has an animation that flies in from the left sits in the center, and then if I drag this back, you'll see that one second from the end, it'll go back to the left. The first thing you might notice is that as I change this clip length, the outro animation will adjust according to the duration of the clip. So let's jump over to the interface. You can see right here, we have this checkbox, which defaults to on, which is use clip length. So this will automatically adjust the duration of the animation depending on the length of your clip, which I think is really handy. If you want to turn that off, you can simply do that and you can adjust the idle duration. That's how long it sits after the animation. So in this case, it will animate on for one second, sit there for three seconds, and then at the four second mark, it will animate back out. I really like using the clip length though. I think that makes it a lot more easy. Now to change your settings here, you can go to the presets and pick a preset that works for you. Let's say we use this blur slide. This will slide in a little bit from the left, sit idly, and then again, it'll blur out to the right. Let's say we go to something like enter and exit from the bottom. So this will fly from the bottom, sit in place, and then animate back down to the bottom. Now, in terms of customizing this, I'd like to jump over to a little bit more practical of an example. So I've got a simple edit down here with a few clips from a coffee shop. And we'll lay in some basic logos, uh, some text, and maybe a lower left bug. So let's start here with the beginning. So I've got some uh, footage that I blurred a little bit to use as a background, and we want our logo to animate. So let's have it start from the bottom, land in the center, um, sit there for a second, and then have it pop back down to the bottom. Uh, we'll also add a little bit of a spin to it and maybe a little bit of springy motion when it lands. Okay, so let's apply Universe Logo Motion. Drop that on here. Now I'll go to my presets and I'll select enter and exit from the bottom. So this will fly in, land, and then go back down. So to add a little bit of a twist while it moves in, I need to go to the start properties. The start properties define all of the transformations as well as its blur value from where it starts. So you'll notice that it is using a very high y-axis value, so that would push it downward out of view. So that's where it starts, and how it lands is the idle property. So 960 by 540 is smack dab in the center of my window for a 1080p comp. So let's say I go to the start properties, and I use a rotation y, and I'll set this to 360. So what this will do is start at a rotated value of 360, and then go right back to its zero rotation value, so right here. So this will fly in and do a little bit of a spin. And I mentioned having it do a little bit of a wobble while it lands. So there's a whole section inside the idle properties called idle animation. So sitting idle doesn't mean that it has to do nothing. There's actually quite a bit that it can do. There's springiness, there's wiggle animations, there's pivoting and hovering. So wiggle will have it randomly move, Pivoting will have it sort of oscillate back and forth on an axis. But let's first show springy. So let's go in here to my presets and I'll just select springy. And what this will do is uh, look at the starting value and the idle value and calculate an automatic springiness for when it flies in. If that's a bit too much for you, you can go into the idle properties under the amplitude here and the spring amplitude and dial that down. Let's say I'll set that to 10. This should be a lot more subtle. 
If you'd like some motion blur, we can go down here to the motion blur section, turn this on to medium, and hit play, and it should keep up nicely. Now when I get to the bug, I'll show you um, a few other idle animations here, but let's just talk about using this on text. So let's say we've got some text here and we want to have this animate in. We can apply universe logo motion, and by default this will just fly in from the left and then fly back out. Let's do something a little more creative. Let's go down here to the bottom. Uh, there's a twirl and zoom. So this will twirl in and zoom, or there is a flip at scale. Let's have it flip like that. So it's flipping along the x-axis and scaling in. Okay, so let's jump over here and apply logo motion and we'll make a bug out of this. So let's pick what kind of animation we'd like to do here. Now there's a couple uh, lower left bug presets in here, but I want to demonstrate this for a very specific reason. So let's say we have this blur slide in and have it blur slide out. Now often you'll be designing or customizing things and you'll find yourself using a full size logo right in the middle of the screen. And then you want to take this and use it as a bug. Well, to reconfigure all of the start, idle, and end properties would take you quite a bit of time. What I would suggest to do is use the position offset and you can move this down like so, position it in the bottom left and also scale it the scale will only scale the image, not the animation points. It will just do a relative position shift. Okay, so let's add a little bit more animation to this. So I'll go up here to my animation presets and we'll have it pivot in the Y. So this will do a little bit of a pivoting animation like so. If that's a little bit too much, let's go into our idle properties under idle animation and I will lower the pivot amplitude to let's say 15. I mentioned I'd show this in Adobe After Effects so you can see how this works. So let's say I create a composition that I'm working in uh, 1080p and I'll make this duration about 10 seconds long. Let's drop this Adobe Illustrator file in here and I want to animate this. So if I apply logo motion right now, it would be bound to the dimensions of the media. So I can simply go to Layer, Precompose, and say Move All Attributes to the New Composition and we can do it that way. There's another way we can do this, which is to turn this layer off, create a new solid that is the size of the composition as well. Make this called logo motion. And if I apply logo motion to this solid, the source defaults to the source itself. So right now, if I hit play, you'll notice that it's basically going to animate a white solid on and off. So if I go to the source and define it to be layer number two, which is that logo, this will also be remapped to the composition size, which will work just fine. I want to point out one other difference you'll see in the After Effects version, which is this refresh length button. Now, the reason for this, let's say if I set this to four seconds and this animates in for one second, sits idly, and then automatically updates based on the length of my clip. But you're going to notice some weird things happen if I start to change this out is that we've got some stored frames here that don't know to update because all we've done is change the length of the clip. This doesn't trigger the cache to be refreshed because nothing has changed in the interface itself. So if you need this to be updated, you can simply click on refresh length and that will update the cache for your layer. Other than that, it works entirely identically to the version I just showed you in Adobe Premiere. So that is the basics of Logo Motion. It allows you to create powerful animations without having to use keyframes in your host app. My name's Harry Frank for Red Giant. Thank you so much for watching.